Free License Podcast, welcome to another episode. On this episode, we have an educator who is not just an educator, he's a motivator and an inspiration to boys and young men in and around the Mar Bay area. That's, you know, St. Thomas Pub over country for those who don't know. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the program, Mr. Jordan Brown. So, Mr. Brown. Yes, sir. Uh, you know what go on this program, you know, first things first, we have to, we have to really let the people know which community in, in the parish you consider home. Where is where is home for you? All right, so home for me is Church Corner. That's what I thought. Okay. Just 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 want the audience a little bit into, you know, your upbringing, which schools you attended and, and all that good stuff. So Church Corner, where you attended school? All right, so I attended Morant Bay Primary School. Then I went to the Morant Bay High School. I should have gone back to say the Mark Bay Primary School. In <laughs> <laughs> and then I went to Michael University College and uh, UTEC. Um, and now I am back at Michael working. Oh, okay. So for years you uh, were a teacher at, at, at um, Mark Bay Primary. At Mark Bay Primary. In recent times, you won a very prestigious award. Uh, it's the last school teacher of the year. What year was this? That was for 2022. So for those who don't know, just give, give us a, a little synopsis as to the criteria for such an award and um, what does it mean for, for people to get a good understanding? What does it mean for someone to really win such an award? Because as far as I'm hearing, it's, it's a big deal. Well, it is a big deal because uh, many persons would want to be given that title. So in order to get it, you first of all, you don't apply for it. You can't apply for it. Mm -hmm. It has to be done through work. And so every year, teachers are praised. When they are praised, the teacher with the highest score from the school, that that's those scores from all the schools, the, the teachers with the highest scores, those scores are sent to the Ministry of Education. When those in the region, so for region two, the scores would have been sent. And then now they sit down and they look at all the scores that have been sent and the, the names of the teacher and they go through like a process to see which set of, which teacher would be best able to represent the region competing against the other six regions because there are several regions in the country. And so they would look at your community involvement, the things that you do in your community, the things you do in your classroom, the things you do in the school, the things you do outside on a national level and all of those things. So I am assuming that when they looked at it, my 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 name and my work would have spoken for itself. And then it would have given them the opportunity to send me to compete against the other teachers in the other regions. After that, you are sent to the Lasco Foundation where they give you a lot of interviews and they watch you teach and they look at your work and it's, 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 a, it's a process that is not for the faint of heart because it, it is rigorous. And then now, after that, you go through the paneling, which is the hard part, where they, where you sit before maybe at least four or five persons and they, they drill you to see if what you have in front of you is actually what is true. I, I, I would encourage anybody who wants to become last teacher of the year not to work to become Lasco teacher of the year. Just work from your heart. Just work from the fact that you know you are doing something good and you are impacting lives, not only the students in front of you, but try and impact as many persons that you can. Students, teachers, principals, everybody outside that you can impact, you try and impact those persons so that you, you it, it, it speaks for itself in the sense that they will know that you're a genuine person. And you understand? I, I did not think of myself as Alaska Teacher of the Year. So even when I got the email to say that I was going to be awarded as an excellent teacher in the country, I was like, okay, then that's good. 
But I think two weeks after that, I got another email to say that I have been shortlisted as one of the top teachers in the country for Alaska Teacher of the Year. And even then, I was still not confident in myself to say that I would be. Because, you know, you're going up against other persons who would have done a lot of work. But God is faithful. I can tell you that God is really faithful. And when you do things for not, not for show, God will reward you in hope. That's, that's, there's a lot more, but I just let that stay right here. Based on what you're saying, uh, it, it's best for people to just let those things happen organically instead of trying to force it because you, ju you just can't really prepare for it. You have to just be who you are and it, your, your marriage will speak for you pretty much. So let's get to the, the meat and potatoes of, of this episode. Um, you have a huge event coming up. Um, uh, is it the Boy Symposium? Just speak a little bit as to how and what sparked the idea of the Boys Imposing and tell exactly what it is. All right. So when I left college in 2006, I was working at a prep school. Those are good children. So there wasn't any issue there. Mm -hmm. But, you know, in a prep school, some, the money is not always going to be, will never be matching to that, that you get of that in the ministry. Good children yeah, meaning like the, the, the behavior they don't, is a little bit better. They behave themselves. They don't give trouble. Okay. They don't have to worry yourself. But the pay is not as much as if you were working for government. So I got a job at probably high school. When I went there, it, it was a shocker because I realized that these students coming in, I got grade sevens. And grade eights to teach. And I realized that these students coming from the primary school would need some guidance. And so I, I, I thought about it and I said, how can we get the high school students to matriculate into high school from the primary school students to matriculate into high school and have a different mentality? And so it has been plaguing my mind for, for years. And so when I got the opportunity to work at Marvy Primary School, I jumped on it. I didn't give a question. And I, I realized that this is where the foundation is. Yes, we have early childhood and all of that, which is important. But I realized that the, early, the primary system is where they'll get majority of their foundation. And so I thought that would be good to actually try and you know help some persons. I thought about it carefully and then I realized that a lot of the times the boys in the system, they are the ones who are marginalized. They are the ones who are at risk. And it's not because they are they are in quote unquote done sir. It's not because they are slower than the others, but because you know boys in primary school don't really push themselves to be number one. The girls will do that. Boys, when maybe when they reach high school now, that's when we start, you know, to behave a little bit different. And so after winning last the teacher of the year, I, we wanted to do something. I wanted to do some projects. This is one of the projects. Because the first project was to give uh, Mark Bay Primary School some musical instruments so that they could get a band. And then we're still in the process of getting a bus for them, which is being worked on. And then now I said I wanted to do something specifically for boys. And so we came up with the idea of having a boys symposium. We were going to call it a boys expo. But when we looked at an expo and what an expo means, it means that the boys would have come and be displaying a lot of things. And last year it would have been short notice and we only had two weeks to do it. So mm -hmm. we, and we wanted to do it in May. We didn't want May to pass because we could have done it other months, another month, but we wanted to do it in May. And so we used the two weeks to work on that called Last Coaching Foundation. And we told them that we want to do a symposium. And so they were the main sponsor last year. So it was a, a lot easier for me to go about getting the things that I need. This year is a little bit harder because they are not the main sponsor. And so I have to be getting sponsors from all over. The symposium is a day for boys. It's just all about boys. We, we start off with breakfast in the morning. So we start at 8.30 with breakfast. And the thing is, 
just to go back, I want it to be something that is yearly. I want it to be something that is done every year on May 31, mm -hmm. 2024, 2025, 2026, 2027. So every year it is supposed to be done. So even if I die, persons can take the platform or they can take the the blueprint. The blueprint or the blueprint, thank you, and they can use it to maintain this symposium. And so last year when we did it, we we started with 30 boys from the primary schools in St. Thomas. And this would have been worked out to the guidance counselors in the parish to select the boys that would they see you have, who have potential and they want them to, you know, get a little different mentality about life. Because I am thinking that many times we, we focus on high school, which is good, but that is when the tree is almost bent. Or you can't really straighten up again. But these now are young and we can, these are like the plants, the, the, the seedlings, and we can, you know, straighten them a little bit and get them on the right path. And so we decided that we were going to do 30 boys. And so we had, like we said, Last Touching Foundation, we had different agencies coming in. We had the MP, we had Ms. Shaw, and all of these persons who came on board. We had also the municipal corporation who gave us the part to use free and all of those things. And so we had the sip and pain section. So we started, like we said, we started off with breakfast for them. So they got breakfast. After breakfast, they got a mentorship session where they got a motivational speech from different persons. So we had persons who were incarcerated and they came out. So we wanted them to show the boys that, listen, don't do bad things because you might not be lucky like me. You understand? And they shared their experiences that they would have seen other persons, you know, from children age coming up doing things and some of them don't make it out. And then after that now, we had a session we break out into a session where they got a chance to talk to different mentors. We had, uh, I don't remember his name, but he works with Sizzler Kolanja, uh, Kolanja, I don't really, I can't pronounce it so well. Mm -hmm. And so he came on board and, you know, they just came and they were just a part of it. We have Bertram Anderson, which is a, you know, a good, good mentor. And they came on board and they just spoke to the boys. After that, the boys got break. And so that's one of the reasons why we try not to spread it too much because we want to ensure that we can feed these boys. We don't want them to come and be hungry and then they get all flustered and then it changes the whole mentality of the symposium. And after they got break, they went back into another session, they did the sip and paint and they got a chance to interact with like the mechanic section of cars going there to, to, to move this you know turn that got a chance to drive it the fire department came down with their fire truck and they put on the things the coats the helmets and all of those things and they got a chance to you know just look at how fire would be outed and all of that and after that they got lunch oh so you were telling me about what happens in the at lunchtime for the boys now during the symposium. All right. So after lunch, they were given the massage and the facial and manicure. Manicure is the one that is done with the fingers, right? I keep mm -hmm. mixing them up, you know. <laughs> so they were given that. And they were also given free T-shirts by Hewitt Spring Trip. And so every boy got a free t-shirt. And apart from that, each boy left the symposium with a gift bag from Last Touching Foundation. Also. Okay. There was a lot of food. They had enough food to eat and all of that. So it was just a day for them where they could enjoy themselves. We had mentors coming on board, like I'd said before. And it was just an awesome day for them. This um. year. Yeah, so what the plans for this was, year? Is it bigger and better this year? Yes. So this year, we are doing 60 boys. So we have doubled the number of boys that we're doing. Mm -hmm. And these boys how are... Many, how many, how many, one bias question. How many boys coming from license? Well, all right, I'll, I'll answer that. <laughs> so we are using boys from St. Thomas and Portland. So we are taking boys from St. Thomas and Portland this year. We gave each school five boys. So each school can take five boys. Some schools might not have the ability to take five because the school is not big. 
So that is being worked on through the guidance counseling unit. And I, I just allow them to just talk. And so it's going to be bigger this year. We had to get more sponsors, like I said, because we never had, we don't have Last Touching Foundation on board. And so this year we are going to be working. The theme this year, I should have said from the beginning, is today's learners, tomorrow's leaders. And again, the boys will be getting their free T-shirts. They will be getting drawstring bags as their gifts. And we are hoping to put some little goodies in there. Hopefully with the sponsors, we have enough sponsors so that we can you know, put these things together for them. And so we are still looking at sip and paint. Fire department is coming this year. We are working in collaboration with the NSWMA and Gates Foundation. They are coming to do a recycling project where the boys get to use cardboards and make houses. I told them I wanted to see if they could do the cars also. And they are going to try and work on that. The thing with this part, though, is that when they build the houses, they put electronics in there so the boys can actually get to flip it and see the light and all of those things. So that's an exciting part. We Last year, we had Trust to Cash competition where they got trophies sponsored by Dr. Charles. And we also gave them cash prizes. This year, we're not doing Trash to Cash. We're doing a talent show competition. Same thing. And we are going to give away cash prizes, first place, second place, and third place. This year also is going to be great because we are looking for boys in different categories. I won't say the categories. Why? Because I don't want when this is here, some persons might be watching now and they watch and say, when you go do this, you know, boy, and do that, do that, do this. Because we want to see the genuine, we want to see the real boys. And so there are little sectional prizes that we have for boys. We are inviting fathers to be a part of this symposium this year because we want the fathers to know how to treat the boys and what the boys expect. Because yeah, I was I was getting ready to ask you what's the age range for the boys that are invited to come? All right. So the age range for the boys are between 10 to 12 because we take them from grades 4 to 6. Okay. All right. Yeah. And so we have that. We have the sip and paint still there. We have robotics coming on board. This year we have leather craft and we have a healthy drink section. Apart from that, a uh, student of Mrs. Brown is coming on board. She does a lot of craft work. So she's coming on board to, to teach the boys how to do bracelets and those things. What we want is that at the end of the symposium, each boy that comes, once they participate in an activity, they can leave with something to say, I made this or I did this at the symposium. So that is one of the things. And so we have a lot of persons on board this year. It, it is good. The poster is out. So we can give you the poster. The poster is not exhausted because what happened? We wanted to put the poster out so that persons can see. And over time, since we have um, displayed the poster, we have been getting other persons to come on board, you know, to say that they want to sponsor this or they'll do this and do that. So the poster is done because it was professionally done. So it's going to be hard to send it back to ask them to. But we have done some small, some smaller like Instagram postings and you, um, WhatsApp posting where we did get a chance to put all the sponsors and they will play all of those. So this year is going to be awesome. We have JS coming on board and everybody that was on board last year, they want to come back on board because they said that it was good. And they like the initiative. And so we are just super excited to see what the day is going to be like. I am I am I am ecstatic. I am uh, happy to be a, a part of it. It sounds like a commendable endeavor. Um us who are already men who didn't have a lot of mentors to give good conditioning growing up, we know how important this is. Um I'm on board, you know, I'm going to sponsor in my little way. Um, next year, I hope I could, you know, do a, a bit more. Um, I wish you the best with it. Um, I hope it turns out to be a spectacular day and a really, really purposeful day. And so that the, the boys can be really, really impacted and gain and learn and have an understanding what it is 
about life that you don't have to be on the corner. You know, they go to Angela and smoke weed and turn into dogs. And that, I know exactly that is what you're trying to instill in them and trying to yeah. avoid them from going down that pathway. Yeah, and we have a very hard, we have a very hard, hard task. You know why? Because they are looking at some some persons who are in, I would consider to be public figures then, like the DJs and these persons, and they imitate them. That's not going to change, no, <laughs> unfortunately. We, okay, it's not going to change, but we will have we to can show them another side. Yeah. And, bring uh, bring some challenge to it. Yeah, one of the things I am thinking that over the years, going forward, maybe we can definitely collaborate with some of these, you know, artists to show them that, listen, your, your music and your dressing and all of these things, it influences these boys because they look up to you. So maybe we have to try and, you know, get them on board to show the boys that they don't have to do it a particular way. But we, I am super excited. I know the team is super excited to see what is going to happen. And my, 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 my calls are not finished because I have to be on call every second. I, am I was supposed to be in another you know, thing at 6.15, but uh, this, this is long overdue. Yeah, this, this is this is love over you. We should have done love it. Come back. Well, listen, I'm not going to keep you any longer. Um, tell them the date again. So the date is May 31, which is next week, Friday. Mm -hmm. uh, May 31, 2024. It's an annual event. It's an it's annual an, event. Yes. It's, we are praying and hoping that we can keep it every year. Rudolph Elder Park, Marmby. If you're from the parish and you don't know where Rudolph Elder Park is, you're not from the parish. <laughs> One of the things I must say, though, because a lot of persons, they when, when I put up the poster, a lot of persons called. Schools have been calling. High schools have been calling. You know, some homes have been calling to ask if any boys can turn up. So they were disappointed when I told them, no, we're looking at primary school boys. And then they went to primary school. Some primary school called to say they can be on board. But we told them that it's just 60 boys we have because we don't want to water it. Don't we want it to be very meaningful. When, when we can get more sponsors and be able to put more things on board where each boy can be gainfully occupied, then we can actually increase it. Hopefully next year we can do 90 or maybe 120. Because yeah, and then we get more persons. Good, good things more. multiply. <laughs> yes. All right. So... Thanks for being on the program. This is a, a, a great cause. I wish you all the best with it. And um, keep me posted. And next year we're going to come on board a bigger way and make it bigger and better. All right? Yes, sir. Thank you very much. You're welcome, sir. We'll talk again soon. All right? Yes, sir. All right. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the program. Please check out our apparel at thereallicense.com and remember to like, share, and subscribe to the channel. It doesn't cost any money unless you're just acting funny. Haha, <laughs> you hear what my baby said. <laughs>